Hey, Inform Nation, welcome in to episode number 48 of the Inform Fitness Podcast. I'm Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and a client of Inform Fitness. We'll be joined in a minute with the star of the show, New York Times bestselling author and the founder of Inform Fitness, Adam Zickerman. Hey, real quick, we are very excited to welcome a new sponsor to the Inform Fitness Podcast. You know, over the past 47 episodes, we have interviewed several authors with books that contain content to help educate you in the science and mindset necessary to burn fat, build muscle, and to supercharge your metabolism. You might remember our episodes with Gretchen Rubin, Dr. Sylvia Terra, and Dr. Martin Gabala. Well, all of those authors, including our guest in this episode, narrate their books and are all available at Audible. Audible is a subsidiary of Amazon and the world's largest producer of digital audiobooks. So if you enjoy consuming your content through your ears, much like you do with this podcast, Audible is perfect for you. Tell you what, we have a special offer for you, Inform Nation. How about a free audiobook? Here's what you do. Simply click the link in the show notes to audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. Sign up for a free 30-day membership trial and download any audiobook for free. Now, if you decide to cancel your membership for any reason, you get to keep the book. Simple as that. You have nothing to lose. A good choice for that first free audiobook would be the one penned and voiced by today's guest, Chef Judson Allen. Chef Judson's book titled The Spice Diet includes strategies and recipes that support the Power of 10 Nutrition Protocol, as mentioned in Adam's book, Power of 10, the once-a-week slow-motion fitness revolution. Oh, and one side note about Chef Judson's audiobook. It comes with a downloadable PDF with all the necessary spices, charts, and recipes to fire up your metabolism. Okay, let's get to it. Here's Adam Zickerman and our guest today. He calls himself the flavor architect, Chef Judson Allen. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. We have a great guest today. I'm really excited about this. Uh, we have with us today Chef Judson Todd Allen. He's the author of The Spice Diet. The name of the book is called The Spice Diet, and the, the subtitle is Use Powerhouse Flavor to Fight Cravings and Win the Weight Loss Battle. Full disclosure, first of all, uh, my publisher of my book, Power of Ten, was working with Chef Judson, and he and Chef Judson wanted to put an exercise component in there. And I work with Chef Judson, and uh, part of this book has a high intensity training aspect to it. So, so I, I thank Chef Judson for inviting me to be part of this book. Uh, but that's not why I'm having him on the show. <laughs> I actually like the book regardless, and I've said this before in other podcasts. And this is why I like the book so much because. When it comes to uh, making healthy food choices, as Chef Judson put, points out in his book, and as I've pointed out a million times, it, 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 this is not easy. It's not easy to control your cravings and, and, and eat properly. Let's, and um, well, I've always used a song lyric to, to kind of help kind of guide people through these, these difficulties of making choices. And that is, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. And there are lots of things that we have to avoid. Simple sugars, refined carbohydrates, the list goes on. But there's plenty of things that we can have. And that's the way I like to look at it. Don't pine for the things you can't have, like pizza and a lot of pasta. And think instead of the great things that you can have. And what I love about your book, Chef, is the spice diet helps you love the things that you can have with the use of spices. And, you know, just like some people, when they're decorating their house, they're afraid of color. They just t paint everything white and tan in their house. Well, Chef, you're, you're, you're helping people kind of uh, get over that fear of using spices in their foods and, and staying away from just from salt and pepper, which of course are great spices, but like there's, there's a lot of spices that we can use. And we're going to get into all that. I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of questions about spices. And I love to cook and uh, I love to love the things that I'm allowed to have because I am avoiding all the things that I crave and I've never gotten rid of those cravings. I'm always pining for things I can't have and I always get over it by thinking, what can I have and how am I going to make it taste great? And you say in your book, Chef, you say uh, at the beginning of your book, you say you don't have to sacrifice flavor to eat well and healthy. So that leads me to one of my first questions. I just want to 
maybe get some background on you. And I was wondering, where, where did your culinary journey begin and, and, and what brought you to where you are now? Wow, great question, Adam. You know what? I, I tell folks all the time that, that my culinary background is a little different. Um, I always say that I used to dream about food when I was a little kid. And, you know, I, I knew that there was something different about me. I just never knew what it was. But the moment you begin to like literally dream about food, like the flavors, how you put them together, you know, something's not right. Yet. <laughs> but, you found your calling, so to speak. If you dream yeah. But later, later in life, to your point, later in life, uh, it, it, it turned out to be my calling. It turned out to be the fact that this was something I was very passionate about. So, uh, you know, I followed that. I followed those dreams. I followed that passion into uh, into high school where I studied food science. Um, and I went to the only urban agricultural high school in the city of Chicago. So mm -hmm. let me just kind of put some framework around that okay. city of Chicago in a farming school. That is kind of, doesn't make a lot of sense <laughs> in an urban area, you know? So, <laughs> you know, there were a lot of things working against it, but there was a lot of things working for it. So, yeah, so, you know, I was introduced to, to the science of food uh, at a, um, in high school, and mm -hmm. I decided to carry that on to University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, where I went uh, for my undergraduate degree for college, where I continued food science uh, and studied engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, a very different back background. You know, so I'm a food scientist graduating from the U of I, mm -hmm. uh, and I would say a little later, I decided, you know, I want to kind of get that uh, culinary background as well. So I went out off to Paris and I studied the Cordon Bleu and studied uh, that European culture of food, traveled around um, and really kind of build my expertise around really understanding culinary at its truest core. Uh, brought all of that back to Chicago and, you know, I've created my own culinary point of view. Um, uh, along that journey, of course, I experienced a lot of, uh, uh, issues with my weight, you know, I experienced a lot of difficulties uh, with food addiction, which started when I was a very young child. Um, and, uh, you know, I've really kind of been able to really create my, again, my own culinary point of view. Uh, and that's around healthy food with bold flavors. So, you know, Chef, I've often found that in interviewing thousands of people, th those that are successful uh, started on a journey because of some pain they had in their lives and they were looking for a solution. And that certainly uh, seems to be your case. And now with, with your book and your restaurants, uh, you're helping other people change their lives and their eating habits as well. Tell us about that big break that you had that was a, a catalyst, I think, it sounds like, in your life and in your career. Yeah, it, you know, uh, like I said, I, I'll kind of go back to that childhood moment where, um, you know, not different than a lot of people in this world that struggle with weight um, or struggle with any addiction, right? It, it followed me for a very long period of my life. And it had such a captive hold on me that food literally controlled who I was. Um, again, I, I knew something was wrong with me and my family and my parents knew that something was was off uh, when most people consume one cheeseburger and fries or hey we'll say maybe two cheeseburgers and a, and a fry you know for me it was four or five you know so it was it was to the point where nothing no amount of food could really satisfy me uh, and it wasn't until I graduated from the University of Illinois Right, hadn't experienced uh, the weight issues, had experienced having experienced uh, the uh, ridicule, the uh, the bullying, all of that, all of that stuff that comes with being overweight, uh, having an addiction to food. Uh, but I graduated from the U of I, and I was at an astounding close to four hundred pounds. And I remember getting a photo of myself at graduation, and they don't send you a little bitty photo. They send you this life-size <laughs> photo of you. So, Poster. You know, of course they do. So for the first time in my life, I'm looking at myself for who I really was, and that was an overweight, a really obese person. And I always tell people that, you know, they, they say, well, didn't you see yourself in the mirror growing up anyway? And it's funny because when I looked in the mirror and I was overweight, right, I was struggling with obesity. 
I wouldn't see an overweight person, right? I can control what I looked at. I would look at my face and I was okay with that, right? The smile, whatever. And I was fine with that. But for the first time, really, I had to look at this image. And that's when I began to shed tears. And of course, I blamed everybody but myself. You know, everybody was the culprit but me, right? Um, but it wasn't until I really came to terms in the grips of why I got to where I was, you know, what I went through as a child, all of those hard moments in my life that really had me turn to food as that coping mechanism. I had to really address those things. And then I had to uh, acknowledge them and release them. And that's when I decided this was the point that I was going to take that healthier lifestyle journey and be successful at it. it, it from a career perspective, um, I, I had an opportunity to, uh, to work for, I call him one of the greatest and biggest names in entertainment uh, and entrepreneurship today, Steve Harvey. And that was a true, total blessing, I tell you. I remember listening on the radio one day and I was in the car with my family and Steve Harvey made an announcement. And he said, uh, I'm looking for a chef in Chicago that can help me to not only lose weight, but in the process, I want my food to be flavorful. And I remember looking at my mother and I was like, did you, I, I like was hitting my mother and my brother. Like, did you hear this? Like, he's looking for me, the architect of flavor. Like, he's asking for me. I felt like he was directly calling me on my phone. Like, dude, I need your help. Uh, he had just moved to Chicago to film his, uh, the first season of his daytime talk show. And, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. Uh, unbeknownst to me at that time, I had no idea that people that were a part of my team at that time knew one of the folks that worked directly with Steve Harvey. Uh, she said, you know what, I'm going to reach out to his folks. She sent over my information to uh, one of her friends who worked directly with Steve Harvey. It eventually got to him. He called me on my phone and he literally, I get a call from Steve Harvey. Like, and I'm sitting here like, okay, am I sitting here dreaming? I'm looking at the phone. He, in his iconic voice, you know, he's like, so uh, I hear you're a chef. And uh, I hear you're a healthy chef who cooks with flavor. And he said, and, and, and what the hell is a food scientist anyway? He said, I heard that. <laughs> and so he's going on and on about that. <laughs> I can and, totally see him saying that. You know, exactly. And, and, and it was funny. You know, he said, you know, I, want, I would like for you to come and meet me at my studio. Uh, now, mind you, I'm on the phone with him that day. He's like, I want you to meet me tomorrow, 5 a.m. in the morning, and I want breakfast, lunch, and dinner prepared. But, but the biggest challenge was I wasn't in Chicago. I was in Tennessee. <laughs> so I, I hop on the first flight out, uh, out of Tennessee and head to Chicago. Don't get to Chicago until close to 11 o'clock at night. And I go to a 24-hour grocery store. I prepare that whole night. And I get to Steve Harvey by 5 a.m. and nail it. He loves the food. And, you know, the rest is history. I, I was with him for over four years. So he really had an opportunity to enjoy healthy food with all of these different flavors and profiles and cultural influences, right? I never served Steve the same thing ever. Wow. And, and In he four asked years? Him. That's crazy. That is, it's crazy. So it really showed him. Like his wardrobe. Exactly. Literally like his wardrobe. <laughs> it changes every season. Not He wears nothing the same time. Never wears the same suit twice, man. He doesn't. And I tell you, I'm right there always to get the clothes when he doesn't want them. So. <laughs> this book is cool because it's not just a recipe book and it's not just a diet book. It's learning how to eat healthy and learning the principles of healthy eating and and then it's showing you the practical aspects of it and, and actually cooking and really learning about spices and not having that fear of spices. Let's start at the beginning. Jeff, chef, what, what is a spice, actually? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. A spice is, a spice can come in many different forms. It comes in the form, uh, it can come in the form of, a, of an actual plant, a seed, right? It can come from a bark. Right. But well, how I define it, so people understand it in layman's terms, is it's really one of those flavoring agents. Right. That opportunity to bring flavor to food. And it comes from a natural source. Um, so, you know, where we find that 
some people call uh, these manufactured spices that are full of salt and all this other stuff, right? That's, that's chemically produced in a lab. A real spice is something that you literally take from a tree, from a bark, right? From a plant, from a seed, right? That, that you manipulate it in a way, either you can grind it, you can dry it, whatever, but it brings a certain flavor profile to whatever you're cooking. And, and that's what I appreciate about spices. Spices are healthy for the body, right? It has so many uh, benefits, not only from a flavor, but also from a health perspective as well. Chef, uh, a question I have regarding the spices, are all spices created equal? Meaning if I go to a regular grocery store and they've got all the spices there on, on, the, on the shelf, compared to maybe something like Thrive Market or Whole Foods, it, are all spices created equal or are there levels of, of nutrition and value and flavor amongst different types of spices and how they're created? That's a really great question. Um, Nowadays, you have spices that are organic, right? Um, Which gives uh, a different process in how the the spices are treated, right? So you have a lot of people now going towards organic spices, where before it was just kind of spices or spices. But I would say that spices literally are spices. You know, there, there are no spices that are more, I would say, more nutritious than others. You can get spices that have a better quality, right? So if I'm getting my spices directly from, um, from India, right, they may be a little bit more uh, intensified. So the curry that you find in India, India may be very different than the curry you find in Jamaica, right? So the flavor profiles would be di- different. The intensity uh, would be different. And when I say intensity, I just mean just the potency of it, right, uh, may be different. So uh, I, I couldn't put all curries in the same category, right? And I think a lot of people, when they go to the grocery store, they just see curry and think, oh, well, curry is curry. But you have different types of curry that come from different parts of the region, right? So depending on what part of the region they come from, uh, it, can, it can have a different flavor profile. It can have a different uh, effect on the body. And it can also have a different um, intensity profile. So I would say in that respect, yes. But from more of a nutritional perspective, probably not. Right, because you mentioned... It depends what you're cooking, too. I mean, like, you're not going to use some spices with certain meals because they just don't go together. It's kind of like, you know, uh, it's like certain certain colors don't go together. They clash, right? So... (laughs) Yeah, there are certain foods and spices that probably work much better together. Matter of fact, you talk about that in the book that you know combining these spices together works really well, and then there are other spices that don't work so well together. One of the biggest things I hear from people when before they read the book is, "I'm afraid of spices because I don't know how to use them." They stick to black pepper, salt, seasoning salt, and maybe some lemon pepper, right? Because they know how to use that. Salt and pepper on chicken, salt and pepper on beef, whatever. Uh, But when we get into things like smoked paprika or turmeric or cinnamon or coriander, right? They're like, okay, what is that? How do I use it? And it's not that they don't necessarily want to use it. Again, they just don't know how. So the book really guides them, right? I guide them in that process to say, hey, let's take cinnamon. Let's take coriander. Let's take turmeric. We add it to shrimp, add olive oil and garlic, and you got an amazing meal, right, that is full of flavor. And this is the flavor profile that you get. So I take all the guesswork out of it for people, and I take the intimidation out of it for people. That way, they don't feel scared to use the spices, right? And they don't mind going out and and going to the spice aisle and picking up what they need when they know how to use it. You do a really great job of simplifying how to use these spices in your book. And you mentioned turmeric a minute ago. What about bioavailability of these various components of these spices? Because I know you're the, the architect of flavor, but also one of the things I loved about your book goes beyond just making the food flavorful with these spices. It is using these spices for those that might need to lose lose weight or fight inflammation. You mentioned turmeric. Um, I've learned in the past that turmeric paired with black pepper or a good source of fat, the turmeric works better within your body. What about some of the other spices uh, with the bioavailability of them? Do you have any other combinations that might work well? Sure. So one, one thing that I always love, I'm a spice fanatic, right? I love spicy food, right? And, and this kind of gets into, this kind of gets a little bit into that, but it also gets into how do you fight cravings as well, 
right? Uh, which is also very important, right? Because that affects our body as well. So one of the biggest cravings people will have are sweet and salty. And uh, one of the things I think that begins to alter the brain, the brain's perception, right, is if I'm craving salty, right, one of the things that counterbalance that is, okay, well, let me give you spicy foods, right? And if I'm enjoying spicy foods, then my, um, uh, my interest in salty foods may decrease, right? So I may not crave salty foods as much. And they've done a lot of research out in China that really kind of uh, justifies this, right? Um, so when you're bringing things like cayenne or bringing things like spiced paprikas, right, or hot peppers into your diet, right, or in, in a dried form or in a spiced form, um, those are things that help to speed metabolism, right? It gives you the energy that you need. And it also has been shown to reduce uh, or aid in weight loss, right? Because as you're building and uh, building your metabolism, you're losing weight, right? It just naturally occurs in our body. Um, so those are some things that I think are positives when it comes to the spices. And one thing that I would pair uh, uh, the spicy things with, right, are different things that bring in natural sweet elements. Right, because that helps to curb your desire to want sweet foods after uh, you enjoy a meal. Right, and I tell people one of the biggest things is to make sure that when you're consuming a meal, you're satisfying different elements on your taste buds. Right, so one of the things are if if I'm going to enjoy a super salty meal, right, uh, a cheeseburger, and it's full of salt, right, I'm probably going to want something sweet after. Right. I'm going to go to the cheesecake. I'm going to go to the brownie. Right. But if I say, you know what, I'm going to enjoy a stir fry that gives me sweet, that gives me salty, that gives me a little bit of the spicy that I'm looking for and all in a natural form. Right. Not using processed ingredients. Right. Then my desire to want that cheesecake after has been decreased because I've satisfied that sweet element on my taste buds. So it's combining spices and ingredients that can kind of help reduce the cravings and reduce other things that kind of go on with our brain function and with our body function. That makes sense. That makes total sense. That, that was great. Uh, you also talk about substitutes to satisfy your cravings. Yep. For example, you talk about substitutes for people that, have, that are chocoholics or substitutes for people that have a sweet tooth. Uh, how would how do you satisfy, for example, like a salty craving? People that love salt. How how do you how do people? Because that's a big one. People, you know, love salt, and 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 when they start eating healthier and they get rid of all that processed food, they're giving up a lot of salt, and and uh, I bet that becomes a problem for people. So how do, how do you deal with that one? So to satisfy the salty piece, and I'll use I'll go. Uh, for the cravings of potato chips first, right? So one of the things that I came up, uh, recipe I came up with was Brussels sprout chips, right? And instead of using uh, the potato, which is super starchy, and the salt, the sea salt that I would put on there that makes it really good, right? I said, well, let me get Brussels sprouts and take off the leaves of those Brussels sprouts, right? And I would bake those, get them super crispy. And then I will use some of my spice blends that don't have so that don't have salt in them, right? But it's left, but you're left with these amazing flavor profiles. So like I came up with a recipe for jerk Brussels sprout chips, which are amazing. So you get the sweet, you get the spicy, you get the aromatics in there, and you're left not really craving salt because what's on your taste bud is the fact that you're getting all these other flavor profiles kind of popping off. Um, another thing, uh, if people just desire to kind of go for the salt shaker at a meal, one thing that I like to do is incorporate things like vinegars, um, and citrus, citrus zest, right? Because those are things that help you to salivate, right? And those are things that kind of get your taste buds alive in a, a bit, you know? And I've found that those are the things that actually help reduce the cravings for salt as well. So your things like your vinegars, and you can, you can get out to the grocery store and get so many types of vinegars, apple cider vinegars, uh, rice wine vinegar, which has a sweetness to it, um, different flavored, um, flavored vinegars, but also the, the citrus zest, like lime and lemon are my best friends. I keep a lime and a lemon in my refrigerator at all times, because I know that after, like if I'm making shrimp, instead of going for the salt shaker, 
I'll put lemon juice in there. I'll put some lemon zest in there. And I'll add like some fresh parsley and garlic. And I don't crave the salt because I've got so much flavor kind of nestled in that, in, that, uh, in, in that recipe that it just pops. So that's great, Chef. Uh, you, you just reminded me when you said that, you know, so many of these uh, pre, pre-made uh, spices, they come with a lot of salt in them. And I remember when I started, uh, you know, putting dry rubs, I love smoking meats, you know, and uh, I would make a, a full pack of brisket in a smoker. And, uh, you know, I, I'd look, I go to the store and look for all these different rubs that they have and so much salt is this the first ingredient. And I'm like, so I end, that's how I ended up making my own rubs for it because I didn't want all that salt. Because when I started using those rubs, uh, you know, when I when the product was finished, it would be like too salty. I'm like, wow. And I don't mind salt, you know. So if it sounds – if it's too salty for me, it's going to be probably too salty for a lot of people. In any case, I love your, your, your spice combinations that you put. I mean, wow. I mean, that's really cool because like – you don't have to be lazy anymore and go and buy some pre-made, prefabricated rub in the store that who knows how long it's been sitting there and how fresh it is. You can make your own rubs and, and your, your own spice mixes, and you have a whole bunch here. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about some of them, like what some of your favorites are? Uh, it's really exciting. This book is full of these different, uh, like, what do you call them? Spice? The, the, the spice blends, yeah. The spice blends. Yep. I mean, wow, I can't wait to start using some of these. Yeah, these are these are great. I mean, you, you, Adam, you hit it on the nail. It's like, you know, people don't have to go out and buy those pre-fabricated, pre-boxed, whatever you want to call it, spices uh, now because they're full of sodium, they're full of sugar, right? They're full of all of these things that we don't necessarily need, and it's so simple to buy the fresh spices or the spices and then make your own mixes. What I liked about one part of your book that I really liked, Chef, um, you have what you call the startup spice rack. So yeah. what, what are some of the staple spices outside, of course, the ones that we all know about? Uh, what are some of the startup spices that you think everyone should start working with uh, outside of the typical ones? Yeah, that's a good question. A couple, I would say a couple of the really, really great ones that you want to add to any startup spice kit. I, and, and, and I'll tell you, these change over a period of time, right? Depending on how my taste buds change. But for right now, I'm, I would say lean more towards the smoky paprikas and the, uh, or the spicy paprikas. I'm really into this paprika kit right now um, because paprika does so much, not only for flavor, but also for color in food too. So it makes our food sexy and, that, and that's important. Um, I would say turmeric, of course, turmeric is something that you want to add to any startup kit. Back in the day, it would not be anywhere near a startup kit, right? But because turmeric now has so many benefits, both flavor and health wise, it's something that I recommend people add to their kit. Um, dry thyme. Thyme, I think is one of the it's just like, oh my gosh, I call it one of the best spices you can have because I put it in everything. Uh, I would say also, of course, you know, your your onion powders and your garlic powders are always essential, right? Because those, I think, are the basis for everything, garlic and onion. Um, but I would also encourage people, uh, Adam, to go towards kind of channel outside of the spice range. And I would say the three ingredients that I would also have on hand, which I wouldn't consider necessarily spices, but enhanced flavor would be parsley, fresh parsley, uh, some type of lemon or lime zest or juice, you know, of course, fresh limes and lemons and fresh garlic. So those would be the ones that I, I encourage people to get. All right, chef, this is great. This, uh, I mean, I can go on and on with this and this book has so much more to it. I mean, I highly recommend it. There's so many great recipes in here. And if you really want to love the one you're with, and not pine for the things you can't have. This is the book for you. And learn, and don't worry about using color. You know, paint your room red and use tarragon and, and use cardamom and use all these great spices. Don't be afraid. All right. And that, that's, that's the big lesson here. And uh, not only that, you get the health benefits to boot. So thank you so much, Chef. I really appreciate you joining me. Thank you for having me on the show, you all. Special thanks to Chef Judson Allen, the author of The Spice Diet, for joining us here on the Inform Fitness Podcast. 
As I mentioned at the top of the show, you can pick up Chef Judson's audiobook for free just by clicking the link in the show notes to audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. You'll sign up for a free 30-day membership trial and download The Spice Diet. If you decide to cancel your membership for any reason at any time, you get to keep the book. And while you're in there, you can pick up audiobooks from our other guests that we've had on the show, and you'll enjoy discounts of up to 30% just by being an Audible member. Speaking of free stuff, if you have not yet tried The Power of 10 Workout for yourself, click on over to informfitness.com. There you'll find a free slow-motion, high-intensity workout waiting for you. All you have to do is click the Try Us Free button right there on the homepage, fill out the form, pick your location, and then experience a free full-body workout that you'll complete in just 20 to 30 minutes. One last request from us here at the Inform Fitness Podcast. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button in whichever podcast app you might be listening. We have close to 50 episodes for you to binge listen. And if you don't mind, we would really appreciate it if you took a couple of moments to leave us a review. Until next time, for Adam Zickerman and Mike Rogers of Inform Fitness, I'm Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network.